Welcome back, everybody. Rudy, Alpha Investments. Today, we're starting back up on a new sub-series. Okay, everybody? This sub-series is going to be based around the card shop things that cause card shops to fail. Card shop failures. Today's episode, starting off episode one, accessories. So today, we're going to focus on pretty much playmats. That's what we're going to talk about today. Whole video on playmats. If you don't like playmats, you think they're stupid, or you can just wear them as a hat, or you can wear them as underwear, good for you. Today, I'm going to focus on playmats in the background here at this particular store location. I've got a back room full of a poopy ton of playmats. We've got playmats everywhere. There's probably, no joke, even on the floor, you guys can't see it. Check this out. No joke, there's probably, there's probably about 3,000 playmats in this back of the store. So today we're going to talk about why playmats could be some of the most profitable accessories and they're the same accessory that literally is the most toxic inventory asset you can carry next to probably card sleeves or deck boxes. All these foo-foo little things. So we're going to kind of go over the pros and cons and what makes these toxic assets on the books if you're buying or selling a card store. If you're looking to evaluate a card store, if a card store owner contacts you and says, Hey, Rudy, my name is Dr. Timmy from the Third Private Jet Corporation. I don't know what that means. I have a million dollars in inventory, and they're all filled with $20 playmats. Okay. So here's the problem, everybody. We're going to get right into this. So right out of the gate, when you talk about playmats, I'm going to stand over here so you guys can see. When you talk about playmats, in this area, I have a bunch of Force of Will playmats. Uh, with some of my leftover Force of Will stuff. We got the Hot Green Chick Force of Will starter deck here. Simply put, um, what happens is when any new product comes out every 30, 60, 90 days, between Pokemons, Yugliohs, and Mujik the Gutherings, you got Weiss Buddy Fights, you got the Vanguards, you got the Final Fantasies, you got, what, Key Forges, and the new, you got the Exoduses, the Flesh and Bloods, the Argent Sagas. I mean, it just goes on and on. So you get the idea. The problem is, stores, in the moment, they order a stack of playmats. Now, historically, historically, a playmat wholesale price is going to cost a store owner... What do we got here, anyways? Uh, it looks like a variety force of will playmat. Okay. So, historically, what ends up happening is a, a playmat will cost a store, I'm going to guess, $10, $11 for playmat. And they're going to retail... Here's an Ultra Pro. And they're going to retail for about $20. $19.99 is what a store is going to try to sell them for. So the margin is going to be a lot healthier than carrying something like a starter deck. Or let me grab, <coughs> let me grab a booster box. Um, hang on. Let me... Uh, here we go. <clears throat> We're going to advertise for this. The brand new Flesh and Blood card game coming out soon. So they've got a brand new card game here. So obviously, this is going to be a very hot product. It's a really good new game coming. It's a big deal. Now, if you're getting playmats with that, usually a lot of times you can kind of do package deals. You can sell a good amount. Customers are happy. It, it really engulfs the player and the collector into that new product. And it, make, it helps make the local game store some money to stay in business without being a gas station 7-Eleven selling candy bars and sodary, sugary drinks that pretty much shorten your player's lifespans because they're terrible for you. Now... Here's where it becomes a toxic asset. So when you talk about playmats, like when we look at this inventory here, everybody, we're looking at massive, crazy playmats. Some of these playmats are pretty old. Some of them are very sought after. Some of these actually go up in value. But the problem is the average store is not going to be able to move the inventory. So what happens is a lot of these playmats, um, here, here's a good example here. This was a very popular playmat back in the day with Force of Will. Very, very popular playmat. And um, there's a couple of them that were very... Here, here's a good one. This was really popular. A long time ago, the uh, Millennia of Ages playmat was a very popular playmat, everybody. And what happens is, as it ages, the stores get stuck holding dead inventory. This is a normal issue with most retailers around the country when it comes to the video game, everybody's favorite company, GameStop, Collectible cards, LGSs, even the big boxes, the Walmarts, and of course everybody's favorite local Amazon.com, you know, what, corner store, brick and mortar, I don't know. And what ends up happening is that, simply put, the product devalues. 
that $20 playmat that you paid $10 for is pretty much on eBay for $10. So if you sell this on eBay for $10, which you probably could, um, you're going to end up after eBay and shipping fees. Shipping's what, three bucks? Maybe eBay charges, you know, eBay, PayPal's 10, 12%. And uh, so you're going to lose what, 20%? So your $10, you're going to walk away with, let's say, six bucks. Maybe even five if you're not good and not good at trimming costs. So the problem is if you pay $10, you ended up sitting on the inventory for a long time. And then eventually you end up selling the inventory at a 40 to 50% loss. And these are the things that causes local game stores to straight up become insolvent and go under. And this is why people say, well, Rudy, I don't understand. There's a new good, I don't know, force of will. This is a new good magic product coming out. Why don't, why don't the store just buy a thousand boxes or do something like you do and just, you know, sell them all for, you know, I don't know, a dollar a box or five dollars profit and make a couple grand? Well, simply put, because of the stale inventory, it becomes a toxic asset on the books. So pretty much all their free cash flow gets tangled up holding inventory that simply put drains the bank account. So the bank account starts to decline month after month. When that happens, um, when a good product comes out, they don't have the capital to really jump and try to really have that cash infusion. And that leads to the most common, there, there's, there's really two or three main reasons LGSs go out of business. One is the run out of money. Two is pretty much bad management, employees, payroll, just drains the bank account. And of course, three, it's a local issue. It's a local demographic, local community. Just can't support that kind of business because everyone's buying on Amazon.com. And, you know, you have to be very agile. Obviously, a lot of the slang terms and people have called me the liquidator in the card world because people, when there's large inventories and things that happen, they end up coming to me and, you know, unloading certain positions or large things or full pallet sizes and and I have the capital and the leverage to negotiate different prices. So I'm not paying $10 a playmat. Okay. There are some playmats. I would, not all of them, I wish. But for example, there are some playmats that my cost, I paid a dollar, like 47 a playmat. Now, again, they're not all like that. Most of them are going to be between five and 10. You know, the price is different depending on which one it is in the market and everything. But the point is, you know, when you do that, or when people make fun of me for buying the buddy fight or the card fight vanguard, or what's another good example? When people make fun of me for buying, um, I guess Force of Will be another good example. No matter what the hobby is, or even Magic, some sort of, all the Commander 2018. I still have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of Commander 2018 sets. And, you know, when people ridicule, they're basing their decision on the moment. And years later, everything changes. So that's where we lead to all these playmats that you see that for some people can literally, make, this can make or break a company. Because if you pay $10 a piece and you got 2,000 playmats, I mean, literally, think about that. You could have 20 grand tied up in playmats as dead inventory. And that is enough to bankrupt. Because the average LGS is going to only have capital for probably maybe 10, 20, 30, 40, maybe 50 grand. Most stores that are now established stores, the big flying snowballs and castle kingdoms and really awesome things, these guys are going to have six, seven figure bank accounts, reserves. Lines of credit, access to tremendous amounts of money, capital, leverage. They're not going to experience this kind of downward problems, kind of similar to what, you know, my situation is. So they can evade and they can live to fight another day a good and a bad product. So it's very important. I want to, get, I want to show you a couple good examples here. So let's take another good example here, everybody. Let's just take a, a lower end play mat. Uh, let's just take something, I don't know. Let's just pick something like this. So let me hold it up so you guys can see it on the camera. Let me see. So we have a regular, kind of a neat little Force of Will play mat here. This is actually a pretty nice one. Um, it's actually pretty sought after. It sells pretty easily. But for example, a play mat like that, can I get it to hold up so you guys can see? I was hoping to make it where you guys could, well, that's not working out. No, is it? I was hoping you guys could really see that. So here's the thing. An item like that, historically, um, I don't mind tying up some money in, but you have to remember... The golden rule when you deal with accessories and play mats and all this stuff, you have to be able to play the long game. It's the same thing I talked to you guys about, the vintage magic cards, the old stuff. And this is why dealing in accessories is very dangerous because as the sets rotate, as, as collectibles come and go, they become very hot and the hype is high. And then the goal of Pokemon 
in Magic and all these companies, Force of Will, anything, Final Fantasy, Argent Sagas, Flesh and Bloods, I mean, I can go on and on. The Exodus, the Card Fight Vanguard, Future Card, Buddy Fight, everything. The Weiss, you know, the goal is to get people hyped for the next product to generate the sales and that cash flow. They no longer give two flying flips about the previous product's era. So they like to just fire sale and dump everything. Now, unlike a lot of card games, Magic and Pokemon, kind of the big two column, the big pillars of the industry, tend to hold their own when it comes to sealed product. They don't erode in value like the old Force of Will or the old Buddy Fights or the old Weiss or the old Vanguard Final Fantasy boxes. And you now the Flesh and Blood, the Argent Saga, and the Exus are too new. Those three new card games are too new to really know. Key Forge has not been holding up good as the product ages, which I know it's a different type of game, but the point is the facts are the facts. You look at these type of things. There's a lot of other different options, but I don't really want to just name drop too many because there's no real point to it. I'm trying to point out a fact that accessories are very dangerous. And the accessory business is probably the most under-analyzed business there is. And playmats, while on the surface, oh, every player wants to buy a playmat, everybody likes them, everybody this. But the reality is, these are items you have to be very careful on. Because if there's a million of these playmats, and they end up going on clearance for up from distributors or fire sale on eBay... If you're into these things for $10 a playmat and they start selling for $6 or $7 on the internet, you're wiped out. It's essentially worth nothing. If you sell it online, you get a dollar. You lose 90% of your money. And these are the things that bog down stores. You have to be very careful with inventory management. And that is why most stores don't stand the test of time. It's simply the cash flow issue. It's the inventory. If you are all retailers from Walmart to Amazon, I mean, you know, look. Every Walmart and these big companies, the Toys R Us, these companies deal with stale inventory. Now, stale inventory is not necessarily bad inventory or toxic inventory. It just means it's inventory you have to personally like and be comfortable holding longer periods of time. And that is not a bad thing. Because again, as time ticks on, and every day that sun goes up and that calendar moves forward, different products become better and different products age differently. In the market's memory, the memory of everybody watching this video changes as the years go by. How we view something today is not how we view something next month, six months, 12 months, 12 years from now. And that is an imperative thing to psychologically learn, understand, and to look at a product. And you have to be prepared to hold, have storage, have the facilities, have the cash flow to get stuck with product. That is a necessity. And that is why at the end of the day, to wrap up this video, the accessory business in the LGS business is not a good fit for 99% of the people watching this video. There will always be outliers and there will be people who make it work. But the risk you are incurring simply does not justify the long-term reward.